It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Welcome to the program today. We're so excited to bring the Word of God to you. In our family, my family, Trina's family, our kids and our grandkids, the especially Word of the God, grandkids. especially <laughs> the grandkids, the Word of God has radically wow. changed our lives. We think about it all the way back to the grandpas and the grandmas, yeah. And, yeah. and God is so faithful. His Word is so full of life and power. Today, we're going to bring you a powerful message from the Word of God that I believe uh, will be a great blessing that will change your life. It will because the Word of God is alive. You know, it's always to date. It doesn't get old. It's not like stale bread, but it works. It's today. It's fresh. It's from God's mouth to our hearts. Yeah, and I just say the Word of God came out of God's mouth, yeah. came out of His mouth, and it was spoken before it was written, and then it was written so it could be spoken. So when you take the Word of God, put it in your mouth, I call it mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. resuscitation from God. So today we're going to take the Word of God, put it in our mouth. You put it in your mouth. We believe it will change your life. We want to go right into the program and study the Word of God. If you as a believer are going to live victoriously, understanding how faith works and the authority of the believer, your words will give you dominion over demons, over disease, circumstances, and money and finances in every area of your life. Ha, 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 ha. Woo! All right, now let's jump over here into this area, in the area of faith for finances. Now, I learned this from Dad Hagen. He just simply said this. He's teaching on finances. I was so glad he did that when he came to my dad's church. <laughs> because we love the Lord. You know what I mean? We, we, we uh, had the Holy Ghost, you know, talk in tongues, shout. We just didn't have no money. Like Brother Hagin talked about that guy in that church, you know, he just jumped and ran and rolled on the floor. He said, not a quarter fell out of his pocket. <laughs> that means. <laughs> so in the area of finances, come on, Dad, Hagin came along and taught that you can be saved, have the Holy Ghost, be full of joy, and have a lot of money. Yeah. I thought, I picked that one right there. Amen. He said, matter of fact, God's not opposed to you being rich. He's opposed to you being covetous. So that means all God's going to do is, is, is help us pass a few money tests to show him our affection is set on him. Once our affection is set on him, come on now. Come on, Jesus said in Luke 16, you cannot serve God and money. I thought that's funny, you know, you cannot serve God and money. I thought that's great, you know, that's interesting. He said you cannot serve God and money. He didn't say it's between God and the devil. He didn't say you can't serve God and the devil. No, he didn't say that. He said you can't serve God and money. It would be easier if he had said you can't serve God and the devil. Easy, because nobody wants the devil. No, don't want no devil. But Jesus didn't say that. You did not want the devil, but you wanted the money. So that means to serve God, you have to pass some money test. Are y'all still here? How are you going to do that? Jesus said, unless you're faithful when it comes to money. He said, I will not commit to you true riches, which is things that are better than money. He said, each one of us faithful in the area of finances. He said, when you're faithful in that area, God will unlock some true riches. 
things that are better than money. Amen. So in this area, Dad Hagen came along teaching, and he would teach on tithing, and he would teach some on giving. He did some of that when he'd teach on faith because he pastored one church, actually uh, several churches, pastored for 12 years, but one church, he had to go back and pastor it again. And he said, now, Lord, how come I got to go back? He said, the Lord told him, because you did not teach them in the area of tithing and giving the way I told you to because you were afraid of what they would say. Now you got to go back and pastor that church again because you have robbed them of a blessing. Are you all still here? So he had to go back and teach on that area, amen? So in the area of faith for finances, we found out that not only Christ redeemed us from the power of sin and from the, from, so we can go to heaven when we die, know we're forgiven, but he redeemed us from the curse of the law. Once we saw he redeemed us from the curse of the law, then we found out what the blessing was. Turn over Deuteronomy 28. Once we saw that, instead of being cursed, and that included every facet of your life, the curse was devastating across the board. Affected every facet of your life. Spirit, soul, body, family, finances, children. He says Christ redeemed us from that curse by being made a curse for us that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentile. Come on, through faith, even the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, when he said the Holy Spirit, that just simply means many times in Dad Hagen's meeting, he'd just walk around and he'd just say, be blessed, be blessed. And I'd just go. When I was younger, I'm like, well, what's he doing? But the more I started studying the Word, I found out there is a blessing that comes upon us because Christ has redeemed us, amen, that the blessing of the Lord, it makes us rich and adds no sorrow with it. Y'all still with me here? Amen. So then, come on. Dad Hagen said, you'll use your authority. Come on. He said, if you'll pass the test of being a tither and be a giver, Uh, come on, God's going to smile you into smiling. Come on, he'll love you into loving. But he's going to give you into giving. Once you understand God's generosity toward you, there is no longer fear of lack. And with a spirit of faith, even when you say, I cannot afford to tithe, once you understand the word, you say, I cannot afford not to tithe. The moment you take the word, Malachi, he said, if you'll bring the tithe into the storehouse, you'll be a tither. And he'd bring the offering. He said, God said, I will open. The windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. You don't even have room enough to receive it. Are y'all still here? He said, in your tithe, in your offering, he said, it's going to open something supernatural blessing in your life. Paul says the same thing in Hebrews chapter 7. He said, when you tithe, it witnesses that Jesus is alive. In other words, the tithe means a tenth belongs to the Lord. I never had trouble with tithing because my dad was a pastor. So he made sure you tithe. He would figure it for you. It's the easiest thing in the world for me to figure 10%. I mean, I've been doing this since I was three years old. So my dad would say, now, how much is your tithe? Well, then, you know, if I, somebody gave me $3 or something, 30 cents. He said, now, that's your tithe. That belongs to the Lord, and you go to church, you put that in offering. Right? He said, that's your tithe. And he said, now, how much offering you want to give? Because after your tithe belongs to the Lord. Now, after your tithe, how much offering you want to give? And I'd say, none. I know y'all are much more holy than I was. I said, no, I, I, I just want to do the required. I don't want to go to hell over 10% or nothing, so we will tithe. Somebody said, how do you know you would? Well, I ain't going to take that chance. You can if you want to. I ain't taking no chance on that. Go ahead and take that chance if you want to, but I don't know. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries. Do you need a breakthrough in your life? 
If the enemy can move you from a place of faith, he can get you outside of the plan of God for your life. Break barriers, leave your past behind, and go into new territory with the four CD sets, The Spirit of Faith, Pioneer Advance, The Good Fight of Faith, and the book, Never Run at Your Giant with Your Mouth Shut. Your gift of $25 or more will help Mark and Trina train pastors around the world. Order now. Call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. I have a pastor friend of mine that asked Dad Hagen. He said, um, he said, concerning leadership in your church, maybe on your board, he said, just tell me one characteristic that you think is the most important. He said, and Dad Hagen said, without even blinking, he said, generosity. You'd think there'd be a whole lot of other things, you know, you'd bring up. He just said, generosity, number one thing I look for in a leader. Are y'all still here? In other words, in the area of your finances, then it literally shows where your heart is, where your affection is. And the moment you're obedient or you act on the word in the area of being a tither, 10%, he said, literally, you are witnessing that Jesus is alive. And there is a blessing that will come back upon you. You say, now, what is the offering? The offering is after you tithe, given the 10%. Here's what my daddy taught me. He said, you can tithe on what you make, or you can tithe on what you want to make. Oh, well, really? So immediately, just as a, a teenager, I started double tithing, which is, you know, a contradiction in term, because a tithe means 10%. But I started giving 10% tithing and give another 10% offering. Then I wanted to do what Dad Hagen said. He said he had a man in his church that gave 30%. I heard him say that when I was a teenager. I thought, I, I, I'd like to do that. So I started doing 20% and did that for a little while. And then when he said, guy in his church gave 30%, I thought, I'm going to do that. <laughs> but he said, this guy that gave 30% was a guy that was, uh, you know, working on a work site. And he got injured, and he was just about to die. And Dad Hagen went to pray for him in the hospital. Doctor said he wouldn't live. And so Dad Hagen's praying for him in the hospital. And he said, Lord, I'm not going to let him die. He serves in my church. He's a superintendent. He's influential in the community. He gives 30% of his income to the church. Lord, I'm not going to let him die. <laughs> Come on, the story goes on that the guy came back. To life, right? And he came back to life, told Dad Hagen, he said, I was up in heaven with Jesus, and Jesus pulled back, you know, like a curtain, and said, you can't stay up here. Your pastor won't let you die. You're going to have to go back down there. You can't come up here yet. And he, he said he came back in his body, and he was perfectly healed and restored. Amen. I thought, now how in the world would you pray for some people? He said, Lord, they don't really do nothing. They don't even tithe, I don't think. Just go ahead and take them up there. I don't think they have me me nothing. <laughs> In other words, he's pleading his case. Lord, I need him. If I need him, come on. He said, if I need him, you need him. You're the chief shepherd. I'm the under shepherd. And I need him. And if I need him, you need him. I'm not going to let him die. How many of y'all want to be in such a position in serving the Lord? Come on, that when your pastor prays to you, say, Lord, oh, they can't die. All right. Go ahead and laugh for a minute. Ha, ha, ha. So then I started doing 20%. And then when Trent and I first got married, then I said, you know, my goal is to give 30%. So uh, we're going to get up to there. We're going to give 30%. So I finally got a job as a pastor making $150 a week. And, and uh, along comes Aaron, the little boy. And then just a little bit along comes Alicia. So then the Lord said, uh, when do you want to start doing that 30%? I said, Whew. Whew. La, 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 la. I said, uh, I didn't hear nothing. The Lord said, when would you like to start doing that 30%? I said, obviously not now. I got two kids. I don't have no Obamacare. I don't have no health care. No insurance.
When do you want to start doing that there? I said, well, not, not now. And I opened my Bible to Malachi. When I opened it up, these three words just jumped right off the page. Prove me now. And I said, right, like, right now? <laughs> I just took that like a word from God. And I said, all right, my faith is going to take me another notch in my giving because I know it'll take me another notch in my receiving. So when Trent and I agreed, we just stepped up to giving 10% tithe, another 10%, and another 10%, 30%. And I, I guess we've been doing that for over 35 years. Just laugh about it, huh? Somebody said, well, that must, that must have really hurt you. <laughs> it really has because I just flew in in a private jet that belongs to me. It really it has damaged me in so many ways. I cannot tell you how disappointed I am in all of that giving stuff. All right, jump over to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 real quick and let me finish with this here. I want to see, let me see a happy smile on your face real quickly here. Now, if you're going to have faith in this area, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, here's what Paul says. 2 Corinthians 9, can you find that real quickly here? And let's read this because we're going to act on the Word of God. Ha, ha, ha. We're going to act like the Bible is true. Ha, 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 ha. Go ahead and laugh for a few minutes. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, Paul says, as, verse 7, 2 Corinthians 8, 7, as you abound in everything in your faith, your utterance, your knowledge, your diligence, your love, see that you abound in this grace also. See that you abound in this grace also. What's the word abound mean? It means to excel, come to the front. This grace also, what grace is he talking about? Here he's talking about, some would say the grace of giving, but he's really not just talking about the grace of giving. He's really talking about the grace of God and how it affects your finances. So he's really talking about giving and receiving. I'm going to show you that. He says for verse 9, You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he's rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be made what? Rich. In other words, Jesus not only took his sin, but he also took everything sin produced. When he took everything sin produced, he declared you righteous, which opens the door to everything righteousness produced. So he not only took your sin, he took your sickness, took your disease, by his stripes you're healed, but he also took your poverty. He became poor. Now, he was not poor even in his earth ministry. He became poor at the same place that he became sin on the cross. Because if you say, well, you know, I heard a preacher preaching on the radio years ago, and he said, oh, Jesus, you know, in his earth ministry, he was so poor, poor Jesus. And he was preaching on the radio. This was 30 years ago. And he said, poor Jesus. He said, Jesus was so poor. He was just poor. Oh, it's just a blessing to be poor. He said, just be like Jesus and be poor. And then he started proving his case. He said, Jesus was so poor. He's just so poor that he had to borrow a boat to preach out of. Oh, my goodness. I thought, well, that don't mean he's poor. I mean, the guy that can walk on the water don't need to borrow no boat. <laughs> the only reason he borrowed the boat, come on, is the people that loaned it to him, he filled their boat and their partner's boat. Come on, if the Lord ever asks you for something, expect when he gives it back to you, it's going to be pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Right? Right? Then he went on to say, he's so poor, had to borrow a little boy's lunch. I said, I don't mean he's poor, I understand. He multiplied the loaves and fishes with 12 baskets left over. I imagine that boy's going home with a few baskets. Yeah. Put it in the hand. Then he said, Jesus is so poor, he's so poor, he got buried in a borrowed tomb. I said, well, I don't mean he's poor. I mean, it's a bad investment to buy a tomb for three days. Now, I mean, if you knew you was only going to be dead for three days, would you go buy a tomb? No, he said, I ain't buying one. Just lay me over there somewhere. I'll be up in three days. <laughs> Besides that, Joseph of Arimathea loaned him his tomb. And his family been making money off that for the last 2,000 years. There's some out there now saying, for a dollar, come and see the tomb. So I, I'm just telling you.
Jesus was not poor in his earth ministry. He became poor on the cross. And he became poor that we might be made rich. What's the word rich mean? Abundantly provided for. Now, here's what Paul says. He says, I'm going to leave Titus there to teach you, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, because you gave out of your poverty, but he's going to stay there and teach you, and next thing you're going to do is give out of your abundance. He said, now, here's what he's going to tell you. Jump to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, and let me read this real quick here. Y'all still with me? Come on, give me a shout. Ha, ha, ha. Come on, give me a little laugh. Ha, 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 ha. He says, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6, he said, see that you abound in this grace, and then he tells you how to access this grace. Are you ready? Verse 6, I say he which soweth. So now he's calling giving, sowing. He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. And he says, every man, every person, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Yeah. Read verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, so that you always have all sufficiency in all things may abound. Yeah. Woo! How many believe God's able to do that in your life? Yeah. To make all grace, the Amplified says, every favor and earthly blessing comes to you in abundance. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. Go ahead and laugh a few minutes here. He says, let's finish reading. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad. He's given to the poor. His righteousness remains forever. Verse 10, now he that ministers seed to the sower will both minister bread for your food, will multiply. multiply your seed that is sown, increase the fruit of your righteousness. He said, God loves a cheerful giver. God is the most generous. He's the biggest giver. He likes giving so much that once you become a sower, you pass the tithing test. <clears throat> Excuse me. You pass the tithing test. Somebody might have been choking on that one. If you pass the tithing test, <laughs> and you want to get into that over and above giving, he said, God will give seed to the sower. That's right. The way the Lord said it to me, he said, if you will get addicted to giving, I will support your habit. He said to me, he said, if you'll be a generous giver, I'll do things for you that money cannot do. Amen. Amen. Once you become a sower, come on now, he said, your harvest is totally up to you. You can be sparing or you can be generous. Amen. He said, because you're sowing, the seed is guaranteed. And the seed that you sow is labeled either sparing or generous. Amen. I asked the Lord why he couldn't have four categories, like sparing, better than sparing, not quite generous, and then generous. In other words, there's only two categories. Either you gave sparing, which is totally in your comfort zone, or you stretch and hit generous. Thank you for joining us today as we study the Word of God in our lives and our families, just the Word of God, the power of the Word of God in our home and our family day by day. Mm -hmm. Actually, the Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So the Word of God is inspired by God, and the Word of God is literally God speaking to us. I know, and when you hear a word from God or you come across that scripture that just speaks to you. You know, I like a scripture that David said, I rejoice over your word like somebody that found a great spoil yeah. or found a great treasure, you know, something you really were looking for, you needed, and you go, wow, listen to this. You can't keep it to yourself. You got to tell somebody about it. And the thing about it is when you tell somebody else about it, it's like it explodes in you. So I love the word. You receive it, you, you uh, process it, and then you tell somebody 
and it just continues to go. It's exciting. It's alive. Yeah, the Word of God works mightily and yeah. effectually yeah. in us who believe. And He sent His Word. It healed them. Mm -hmm. So the time you spend in the Word of God will bring supernatural healing, provision. I love 2 Peter chapter 1. It says, according as His divine power hath given unto us all, all things, things that pertain to life wow. and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given to us exceeding mm -hmm. great mm -hmm. and precious mm -hmm. promises mm -hmm. that by these we might be partakers mm -hmm. of the divine nature yeah. and escape the corruption that's in the world through lust. In other words, when you take the word of God and feed on the word of God and speak the word of God and meditate on the word of God, there's salvation, there's deliverance, there's healing in his word. Right. So I encourage you right now, as you hear the word of God day after day, we so, we're so glad you join us on the program here. You can get on our website, markhankins.org, and there you can get all the products and CDs and uh, the books and listen to the word again and again and again. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries. Do you need a breakthrough in your life? If the enemy can move you from a place of faith, he can get you outside of the plan of God for your life. Break barriers, leave your past behind, and go into new territory with the four CD sets, The Spirit of Faith, Pioneer Advance, The Good Fight of Faith, and the book, Never Run at Your Giant with Your Mouth Shut. Your gift of $25 or more will help Mark and Trina train pastors around the world. Order now. Call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Many of the nations we go to have very little access to the teaching of the Word of God. So we not only go there, but we translate and distribute our books so that pastors and leaders can continue to feed their faith. The Lord continues to open the doors in new countries and languages for our books to be distributed. Our vision is to have the message of faith translated in 100 different languages. We believe if we'll do our part in broadcasting on television, through website, social media, and the app, publishing books and CDs, that God will do His part and make sure that the message lands in the right place at the right time. Would you like to join us in this mission to strengthen the body of Christ internationally? Your monthly offering will help pastors and leaders around the world. Call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org to become a World Missions Partner today. Download the Mark Hankins Ministries app today. On the app, you can watch our TV show, listen to the radio program, read the daily devotional, and see where Mark and Trina will be. You can stay connected to Mark Hankins Ministries wherever you are. Download the app today on any iOS, Android, or Windows device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries and start feeding your faith today.